Definitely the number one thing for me, which all girls say and people laugh, especially guys, is a sense of humor. And that's really true. I've dated guys that were in amazing physical shape and guys that were grotesquely out of shape. You keep asking for more fitness models and today we've got them. Jeffrey Beck is here, a personal trainer from Utah to tell you how to keep your heart healthy. Uh, and later in the show, Christina Lindley, an actress and fitness model will join us. And Mike Nguyen from San Diego, the Teenage World Bench Press Champion. Pleasure to have you here today, Jeffrey. Thanks for having me, Greg. And I should say I was happy to hear from you. You watched the show on YouTube and you emailed me about being on the show and you were nice enough to fly in today. So yeah, no, love hearing pleasure. from our viewers. So. Heart disease is the number one killer of Americans these days. And I know that you're a student at the University of Utah. Right. And you're intern you're graduating this summer with a degree in exercise and nutrition? Yes, uh-huh. And you're also interning at the local hospital um, in the cardiac rehabilitation unit? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I thought it'd be interesting, we haven't done much on cardio, but to hear you know, what, how you work with the patients and maybe advice for people more generally about how they can keep their heart healthy. So what, what do you see in the rehab unit? Well, what we see in the rehab unit is basically um, patients who have just had heart surgery mm -hmm. and they send them to us to basically get their mobility back to back to where they can perform activities of daily living and, and basically just get back to living a normal life. And what we do is we monitor their blood pressure before, during and after exercise just to make sure that we have them in a acceptable range and just so nobody drops dead on us right. and uh, <laughs> that would be a big problem um, sure. and so that's that's basically what we do in cardiac rehab and it's we try to educate the patients on proper nutrition and uh, lowering triglyceride levels all that sort of thing uh -huh. and well I hope everybody heard that because I want to hear you know what happens after you've had the surgery but I'm hoping today maybe we could help people from having the surgery to begin with. Uh, what kind of advice would you have for people maybe in their workouts or in their daily life, things that they should be watching out for to prevent you know, the onset of heart disease? Right, well, as most people know, hypertension is a risk factor for developing heart disease. Mm -hmm. And at rest- High blood pressure. High blood pressure, exactly. Now, at rest, uh, if your blood pressure is say 140 over 90, that is pre-hypertension. Mm -hmm and you want to stay out of that range. Uh, basically, your blood vessels are vasoconstricted, mm -hmm. which means your heart has to work extra hard to push that blood through those blood vessels. Okay. So exercise, that's where it comes in. Is It's very beneficial for lowering blood pressure because it vasodilates those uh, blood vessels so that the heart doesn't have to work quite as hard to push the blood through there. And through consistent exercising, that's where the lowering of the blood pressure comes in. And how far can you lower it through exercise? What, what um, optimally lowering? is 120 over 80. 120 over 80. Yes. Okay. So that's the goal that everybody should shoot for is 120 over 80. 120 over 80. And I'm a, does that change throughout your life? Um, it can, uh, depending on how much exercise you do. I believe okay. that exercise is a big, big factor in lowering blood pressure. Now, weight training and cardio or? Um, both is good, but cardio mainly because you're constantly doing exercise for over five minutes. Now, weight training is anaerobic, which means you're just doing short bouts of exercise and you're resting between sets, your heart rate's coming down, your blood pressure's gonna come down. And then when you start the next set, you're spiking the blood pressure again, heart rate's gonna go up. But with cardio, you're keeping your heart rate at basically the same mm -hmm. consistent pace for an extended period of time. So what's your cardio routine? My cardio routine is I usually just get in there, go for about 45 minutes to an hour, and then I'm done. Uh, a lot of people like to split it up as far as going maybe 30 minutes in the day, 30 minutes later in the day. <clears throat> and, um, but my routine is, is generally I'll just do it in one shot. So and how many days per week? Oh, well, it depends on how good I need to look. Um, if you're Generally, in training if I'm, for something. If yeah. I'm in training, I do every day for at least an hour. And I do that coupled with weight training. Um, and when I'm not really, when I'm taking some time off, I can fudge a little bit with my working out. I'll maybe do a half hour every other day. So, excuse Give yourself me, I'm a little still break. going through puberty. <laughs> <laughs> How are you now? Let's see, I know you're graduating this spring. Uh, yes, in May. You went to college uh, early, right? That's why. Uh, yeah, see, yes. 
<laughs> so um, what do you recommend for most of your clients? Is it the same kind of thing that several times a, a day then, or a week or? Well, for most of my clients, uh, I like to work with the elderly. And so oh, oh. I start them off very light. So I would have them do cardio maybe start off at three times a week. And then gradually they'll be able to do it every day. And that's what you want out of your clients, you know, five to six times a day. And, and what about, is there a certain time of day that's better than others? You know, some people say in the morning on an empty stomach mm -hmm. or... You know what? I don't believe in that really. I go in the afternoons every day because I am not a morning person. And I hear you on that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so that's yes. two of us there. there pal, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Um, I, uh, I don't go in the mornings. I go in the afternoons all the time. I never work out in the morning. And I always. I just want to know. I'm sorry. I just want to know who really gets up at 5 a.m. and goes to the gym. But anyway, that's another story. I know. I don't know how who these people that's, are. <laughs> It'll never be me. Me neither. <laughs> so you do it in the afternoon. Yes, afternoon always. Um, and so you okay? So you don't you don't really care if they do it in the morning or the afternoon. And what about incline? I mean, you know, in in kind of varying it. I mean, I like to run a lot, but is it good to kind of mix it up and? Yeah, if it gets stale and stagnant, you're bored with your workout, it's good to, you know, throw something out there that's totally different. Instead of maybe jogging for a couple miles on a flat surface, maybe walk at a very steep incline. Uh, and maybe if you're so used to running, maybe you should jump on the elliptical and do that for a is while and yeah just and is there any particular if you are doing the incline that, were, that you just mentioned um is there any particular incline that you that's or is it just as much as you can do or oh uh, it, it varies between each person uh, just so long as you're keeping your heart rate between 45 and 65 percent of your maximum heart rate you're going to be in fat burning mode so okay the grade really just kind of depends on the person so because a lot of bodybuilders tell me, you know, you shouldn't do too much cardio, or I think they don't do a lot of cardio, and they'll say that uh, maybe they don't run, they'll fast walk, or... Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I, I'm not a walker. If I'm going to do cardio, I'm going to go, you know, all out. Just Type A? Do it. Yes. I'm going to do it and get it over with and burn as many calories as I can. And otherwise, it's just kind of a waste of time for me just to stand on a treadmill and walk for an hour and burn maybe a couple hundred calories. Do you like to do it outside or instead of just inside all the time? I don't like to go outside. I like to do it indoors. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I want to show this is your calendar here. You're on the cover and you also have a fitness DVD, Jeffrey Beck's Total Body Workout, Me, Myself and Irony. I like the fact that you had a sense of humor, by the way, on this because a lot of the fitness videos are just straight workout, mm -hmm. but you were having some fun with it and kind of joking around and... Uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of my style. Uh, I, I like to mix it up. I mean, it's no use to be a, a boring, egotistical bodybuilder. <laughs> Might as well well, I make you it said that fun. on your website yeah. too, that you like to have a little flat, you can laugh at yourself, which yeah, is, I think is a good quality. Exactly. And we've got another photo of you here. This is from, um, what is this from? It's Reps, it's, I guess? Yeah, Besides Reps body Magazine, shaping, Reps. Summer of okay. 06, this I believe. Jeffrey Beck. Okay, well up next, actress and fitness model Christina Lindley. Um, we will be right back. Go on and on about the importance. Oh, Jeff! There's my baby boy! Mom, what are you doing here? Can't you see we're filming? And we are back with Christina Lindley, an actress and fitness model here in LA. You can see her on the cover of Fitness RX. You know, I think a lot of fitness models go into the business wanting to break into acting, and my guest today is doing that. Great to have you here, Christina. Hi, Greg. Thanks for having me. So you have been transitioning from the fitness modeling into the acting. How's that? You got several parts, I believe, currently. I have. Yeah, I actually moved to LA three years ago to pursue acting full time. I still maintain my foot in the door with the fitness modeling industry. And uh -huh. I had a film that just came out on DVD, The Marine. Oh yeah, uh, I saw John that with Cena. John Cena. Uh -huh. Yeah, and he's I, definitely a fitness guy. <laughs> definitely, he started obviously in fitness. He actually, a lot of people don't know this, but he started out working at Gold's Gym in Venice at really? the front desk. And, I didn't know that. Yeah, it was discovered at a, I believe, an Arnold Classic by uh, Vince McMahon. So oh, you go to the yeah. Arnold Classic every year, by the way, don't I you? I do. Yeah, I I was very fortunate in. Um, Recently, I signed with a huge uh, sports supplement company, BSN, and they mm. do a show every year at the Arnold and. The Olympia. So, so you get to meet Arnold? 
I did. I was there. Um, I actually spoke on a panel with him to um, a bunch of doctors that were chiropractors with Jack Barnathan for mm -hmm. New York Strength. What, do, what did year. you think of Arnold? What was he like? He's amazing. He's very, you know, he's built a brand and he went from, you know, having nothing to coming to America and building just an empire. Oh, and now, yeah. Obviously, Governor California. Governor or whatever we call <laughs> yeah. him here. Yeah, everyone it was chanting about him uh, potentially being the new president, which was, you know, hilarious yeah. and great, of course. I think he's trying to get the Constitution changed. Yeah. I don't know what's happen, but, uh, <laughs> if anyone could do it, it would be him, Yeah, definitely. he probably would. <laughs> um, what was it like working with John Cena? Because, again, yeah, I mean, he's such a big guy. Did you, like, work out with John Cena or what? <laughs> you know, the funny thing is the part that I shot, we actually did in California. And oh. I didn't actually meet John until after the film was wrapped oh, at the oh. party and at the launch and premiere. And he was he was really great. They shot their part in New Zealand, in oh, New the Zealand. jungles of, of New Zealand and Australia. So yeah, you got to do it here in your I got lucky. Like, yeah, I was in New Hall, California. <laughs> <laughs> a lot closer. The easy, the chop shop, easy version of it. So. And what I know you've been doing some other. Th um Film and television stuff, yeah. sure. I don't know if you um, caught it last night. I know we had talked about it, but um, my episode of Headcase aired last night on Stars Network, and it's re-airing all the time with Alexandra Wentworth. It, what, what'd you do on that? Um, I played a, a bulimic model. Uh, I don't know if you know or not, oh. but the show's about, it's a comedy. It's an all-improv, uh, non-scripted series, and she plays a psychologist, and she was at Fat Burger with me, and I kept spitting out the burger and refused to actually <laughs> it's eat It's interesting so. they cast you, a sure. fitness model, as a I bulimic know, model, right? because I'm sure that you're not big on bulimia. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> you're not putting the finger down the exactly. throat every day, right? Or no, if anything, no. I, I joke about that, because I love food so much. If I hadn't become a fitness model, you know, I eat five or six really small meals a day, which is probably the only thing that keeps me going because I get to eat all the time, so. <laughs> Food yeah. is good, right? Food is very good, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how did you start breaking into the acting? Was that hard to make the transition? Well, it was, you know, when I first moved here, I didn't know anyone and I just kind of hit the ground running and I started training with some of the top acting coaches and I got lucky and got my foot in the door at the Groundlings, which is where Will, um, Will Ferrell and sure. Phil Hartman got a lot their of start. Yeah. yeah. And, from there, I just, you know, I got lucky and I booked a gig pretty quick and got my SAG card and the ball just kind of kept rolling and I went with it. So, so you and Jeff both have your uh, comedy side then. Exactly. That's yeah. good. You know, that people yeah. aren't too I mean, serious about it. Exactly. That. There's no sense taking yourself too seriously. So. But you have a pretty strict workout routine? I do. Um, like Jeff, when I'm training for a specific purpose, obviously it's more hardcore and But you're uh, not on all the time. No, of course not. You know, <laughs> Thank I, God. Yeah, ever. Yeah, so, the, you know, I know, like, for example, I know that I have a couple of photo shoots coming up in May, so I just started actually this week back on my pretty hardcore training routine, so. We've got a photo of you from one of your shoots here, by the way. This is, what's this from? Maxim magazine. Maxim, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. but if, you know, if I know I'm shooting for someone like Maxim, then they like a more curvy and less toned look, so I'll, I'll push oh. down on the car, a little less cardio, and, you know, I'll allow myself to eat a little more, so. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Okay, because you know, you hear. I was talking to Donna Feldman about this a right. couple of months ago about right. you know the tendency for the ultra thin models and really male and female because they don't like the guys too big for fashion modeling. Exactly. But it's, so it's interesting. They actually. Yeah, I mean, I I do everything and I do some fashion, I do some print and the fitness, and obviously there's a little differentiation amongst all of them. So I'll train accordingly, knowing what I have coming up. Well, I know you also have a. a advice um, column for one of the um, big uh, Online, health and fitness sure. sites. And I thought it was interesting though that when someone wrote in and said something like, um, my girlfriend is, he was a personal trainer and he said, my girlfriend is too fat, roughly. Um, <laughs> I, I don't, he may not told her that, but he wanted to know, should he tell her she was right. too fat? And, and what, I thought your response was interesting. That, uh, well, thank you. Um, you know, I, I just helped to, have him promote health and fitness within the relationship and look at it as a way to get them to, you know, get closer and work out together. But so like, honey, let's go hiking instead yeah, of going exactly, to Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah, exactly, as opposed to right. attacking, you know, I, I, I never think that it's beneficial to be critical to your partner, but definitely be, you know, positive. So you would never say, honey, you, you need to lose a few. No, but at the same time, <laughs> if he, you know, my boyfriend and I were about to go out to dinner and he wanted to go to Domino's, they'd be like, hey, let's go have some sushi, you know, yeah. or just in a fun, helpful way. And like I said, maybe go hiking instead of going to see a movie and having popcorn, so. 
And I think he took it further and said, I'm something like, apparently, I don't know the whole story of the relationship, but they were broken up or something maybe, or off at the moment, and she wanted to get back with him, but he didn't know if he, but uh, would you let that be a criteria for dating somebody, that let's say you were dating somebody and then you put on a few pounds, would you dump him? Or? Of course not, <laughs> no. I, definitely the number one thing for me, which all girls say and people laugh, especially guys, is a sense of humor, and that's really true. I've dated guys that were in amazing physical shape and guys that were grotesquely out of shape, but once we started dating, you know, just to keep up with me, they would start working out and just to be more positive and healthy and they'd see how great I felt after I worked out. So I think by, if you lead by example, it can be a great way of kind of infusing that into your significant other's lifestyle. You know? So you can tell, you're, you're from Georgia originally, so you have that down home southern, Thank you. you know. <laughs> I love it, yeah. I love the south. I go back at least once a month. I mean, I know it sounds crazy. Oh, once a month? I do. I, I lived in Nashville for a while and Atlanta, and I have friends and, and family in both. And I, it's hard in L.A. I mean, it's, it can make you harsh really quick if you don't you know, stay grounded and keep your roots. So that's kind of my way of going back for a weekend and just, you know, eating some apple pie or bread But you don't pudding. have much of an accent. Did you, are you toning it down some or have no, you? Or? No, I, um, I grew up in a pretty metropolitan area of Atlanta okay. and didn't move to Tennessee until I was in high school. So at that point, I think if I would have cultivated a, you know, accent, it, it'll come out a little bit if I have, you know, like some moonshine or something back home. <laughs> <laughs> moonshine, huh? Oh, they still got that around. Yeah, huh? right. In Tennessee, they still have everything around. So, mm. yeah. You were discovered at 14 at a shopping mall. Is that it? Yeah, actually, I was shopping with my mom for back to school clothing when I was 14, <laughs> and a photographer approached my mother, and of course, she, you know, was like, sure, creepy, weird old guy, you know, yeah, but she took his card. Days, but yeah. yeah. But it, we actually did some research and it turned out that he was legit and we called the agency that he had referenced and one thing led to another, so. Well, the other thing I noticed in one of your health columns, you know, I think a lot of women, especially in LA, actresses feel this pressure. You talk about breast implants. One woman wondered if she had, should have that or needed sure. it to be a fitness model or an actress. Right. What are your thoughts on that? Well, my thoughts on that are the same as, you know, does a guy need, um, huge muscles. I mean, I, I think that you can make it. I know tons of actresses and tons of successful models who have no breasts at all, you know, and then you see some who do. And I really feel like that's a personal choice that you make. You know, if you feel like it's something that will help you feel better about yourself and really, you know, it's for yourself, then I don't think there's anything wrong with it. But I definitely don't think it's a criteria to be successful in our industry now. Okay, well, that's good to hear. And you've also got a clothing line coming out. What's what's this? <laughs> it's TLF. It's actually BSN's clothing line that okay. is very... Um, you model this for them. I do. I'm the spokesperson for their clothing company. It's it's really fun and fashion forward, kind of athletic apparel. So I, I really like their stuff. We'll have to get you a t-shirt. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll take care of that. Up next, Mike Nguyen from San Diego. We will be right back. And we are back with Mike Nguyen from San Diego. He is the current Teenage World Bench Press Champion. Great to have you here today, yeah, thank Mike. Thank you. By the way, you also saw the show on YouTube and emailed me about being yeah. on, so I appreciate yeah. that. Like thank Jeff, you. you got a photo of you here from one of your competitions, <laughs> or in competition shape, I should say. I, I also personally like the, the little guy one, though. <laughs> yeah, that's me at one years old. One years old, okay. Flexing. A little bit bigger now. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I know um, we actually have a couple of titles. What, yes. are, what are your other titles? Uh, I'm a two-time uh, state uh, champion powerlifter. Okay. And was that for all age groups or just teens? Or That was all for teenagers. Okay. okay. And, and that involved a squat, bench press, and deadlift. Three different lifts and then you basically you do, you, you max out on all the, the exercises and okay. then they total up the poundages and then they just uh, go by your weight class and your age. And I won that uh, two times with the state and, and national. One and time. what's the other? Oh, that, so you the national title on top also of it. Also on top of that. The state. And this one was just a bench press only, and I won just a bench press only for just bench pressers. Oh. So it was like a bench press contest. How much do you bench? I bench pressed, uh, what was it, 341 pounds, because they went by kilogram. So it was 341 pounds at a body weight of 148. 148. At 19 years. You know, okay. Well, I still have 19 right now, but yeah. But you say, though, you, you, um, you can bench, what, 400, though? Right is now, that? yeah. You... By my senior year in high school, which is just about a year ago, I was heavier. My body was about 160 pounds, and my best was 385 uh -huh. when I left as a senior in high school. And uh, so right now, 
I'm 180 pounds now uh -huh. uh, after that contest. That contest was like about two months ago. Uh -huh. So uh, right now, I'm guessing somewhere about the low 400s. Low 400s. Uh, we haven't tried yet. Cause you know, I'm sorry to say that's probably a bit more than I can do. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, congratulations on that. Oh, yeah. But so, what's interesting about that, one reason yeah. I want to stress the titles and kind of your benching and all that is that what got, kind of got you started on this, you used to get beat up as a little kid, right? Ah, I mean, that's, yeah, yeah, there you go. So, um, one day you were, what, a group of older guys it? stole your bike when you were... Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, I think it was, uh, I was about 12, 11 to 12 years old. I was always kind of picked on before when I was younger, mm. but, uh, and I, uh, what is it? But it never really affected me much about it because I was just like, yeah, whatever. I was a little kid, I didn't really care much. Oh. But I used to rollerblade and bicycle a lot. And at one time during Christmas, my mom got me a new bike and uh, my first day taking it out, I uh, rode it around the neighborhood and these four guys, they looked like they were only about like two, three years older than I was, but they were a lot bigger than me and taller, and, you know. And, they and, just, and you were very skinny at the time. I was very skinny and small. I was lot, yeah, I was a lot smaller and shorter than most of the kids my age back then. So I was just riding my bicycle along the way and then uh, they just kind of basically came up from behind me and they, and they were like, hey, uh, that's a nice bike and I just turned around and I was like thanks and I just kept on going because I kind of had a feeling what was going on and they started you know speeding up going after me and they're like hey give us your bike mm -hmm. and they grabbed me by my arm and they just pulled me off my bike and I just stood there and I just basically I didn't even try to do anything about it I just I just gave them my bike and they just took it and then they took it and I thought they were just gonna leave me alone they took it and then one of the guys rode my bike off and the other three instead was like hey you know wait up and I remember I'm standing there kind of trying to just like you know hide the three guys go after me and they end up jumping me and beating me up mm -hmm. to the ground right in the middle of the street now you said did you know martial arts at the time yeah I, took, I knew it just like I was on my second year of martial arts mm -hmm. At that said, time, but you said that didn't even really that help. That didn't you really help much because uh, I was just way I couldn't physically do anything, you know. But that was the day you said never again, huh? Yeah. So that was a year. Um, so that was my sixth grade year, and uh, but I tell you, I was depressed and I was really mad. Sure. I don't know what I was mad about. I was just really upset about everything for. Uh, oh yeah, who wouldn't? For, like be? about a whole year, and uh, finally. Uh, I think it's towards the end of my seventh grade year was when I finally decided I want to join the football team mm. and I wanted to find a reason to maybe get in shape or get bigger and compete with the people you know. thought you were too little for the football yeah, team. Yeah, including do my mom actually mm. <laughs> <laughs> You know everybody in the football team was like, you know, oh, you know, Mike, you know uh, that Mike that kid No, he shouldn't play football. He's you know, and I told my mom about it. She was just like uh, You son, you know, yeah Shouldn't you be playing something a little bit nicer, you know, like, you know, keep riding your bicycle, I'll buy you a new Chess, one. I don't know. Go play chess, go play <laughs> something else, you know. Well, why, you know, and she, she didn't really, you know, she's kind of skeptical about me and weight training. And then ironically now, you know, I, I started my first year and I trained. And then after a year, by the end of eighth grade, uh, I was the strongest eighth grader. I bench pressed 185 pounds mm -hmm. at 100 pounds body weight at 13 wow. years old. And that's when I started getting attention, a lot of the, the, my coach, the teachers. So the, how did you put on the weight? Because, I mean, it must, yeah. what was your routine? Because mm -hmm. when you are, if you're you know, skinnier or, yeah. or smaller, I mean, to put on that, it must, was it hard? It must have been hard, right? Yeah, it was, it was, it was hard, especially uh, the first year was hard. Uh, I only went, I only gained like about 10, 15 pounds, you know, my first year of training. But I just basically, I guess I would say I had some good, pretty okay genetics, pretty good genetics mm. because I grew pretty fast. I was still studying about a lot. I, I was cramming myself in the library with uh, with books on nutrition and training and finding ways to get big as possible. Uh -huh. And I found all these different diets that were, you know, supposed to bulk you up. I didn't really know. So I basically it was just eating a lot of more meat, more beef, chicken. And I was eating my food. I was trying to balance out school, go home. I would cook my own food as a seventh, as an eighth grader. Oh, wow. I started cooking up chicken breast and then putting it with you know, uh, brown rice, and I just started eating like a bodybuilder's diet hmm. in eighth grade, eighth grade. But I was just constantly eating, and I was just training. I trained like every well, what every other teenager would be doing at the time, th thinking more is better. I trained almost every day for like two watching hours. Watching TV or on MySpace instead you were training, right? Huh? Most teenagers would be watching TV or on MySpace probably. Oh, yeah, <laughs> there you go. But uh, then I got some good results from that, but as time went by after my eighth grade year, when I uh, started my freshman year in high school, I found a way, I found how my body really works, and I actually grow a lot better when I train less frequently. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, and what is it? 
So what's your ideal routine? How many days right a week? Right now, I'm only training about 40 minutes a day, and I only bench press once a week or once every two weeks. Wow. And I only train about three to four days a week right now, and that's basically it. But it's mainly it's the, the, the nutrition, like you know, like all the fitness things that you've done. Nutrition is really important, you know. And then, but another thing is so you do the small meals and yeah, I do the whole day. small meals thing and I eat. But I'm not always too strict all the time because I'm still a teenager, you know. I still have to you know do my stuff. You can't imagine me eating tuna, going to school eating tuna, chicken breast all the time. Sure. I ate what I ate, but at the same time. I still ate some junk there and there. I had some In-N-Out burgers. I like chicken alfredo. I go out and eat oh, with my friends too. on the That's weekends, good. right? Yeah. I love Italian. Fasta Italian. There you go. So I ate whatever I ate, you know. So basically, the, the, the kids my age couldn't really tell if I was on a diet or anything like that. It's just I space my meals apart, and I just train really, really hard. Well, we're running out of time, but you said there was one other thing that you did that also helped? Or? Oh, um, what is it? Um, Back in high school, then uh, my, as I was doing my competition, senior years when I, when I first did my contest, I won the Nationals Pilot thing. And I, uh, the Superman uh, is my nickname in high school. That's where I came, uh, that's where I started, uh, was because of my strength, super strength. I was lifting all the amount of weight that was like superhuman to all the kids my age. And that spread around San Diego. Well, it's great to have you here today, Superman yeah. Mike. I know you're an inspiration uh, for the young kids oh, down there in San yeah. Diego. Thanks everybody for watching, we'll see you next time.